Excellencies, distinguished delegates, ladies and gentlemen, we will now continue to our panel discussion, session six on trade. And to all participants, we kindly request you to take your seats. I will now give the floor to our moderator, Ms. Sinta Wijaya Kamdani. Thank you. Good afternoon to you all. I think this is a problem with the session right after lunch because we have difficulty getting people back into the conference hall. But since uh, time is very important, let's just start our session today. Um, today, this session will be talking about trade. And we are very honored to have um, distinguished uh, ministers, also a representative for business, to join our session. Um, I would like to firstly introduce everybody in our panel. Um, first, uh, the Minister of Trade of the Republic of Indonesia, Bapa Enga Gstiasto Lukita. Welcome, Pa. And um, okay. Second is um, the Minister of Trade from Djibouti, Your Excellency Hassan Humed. Thank you for coming. Pa. And the third is Your Excellency Amina Salum Ali, the Minister of Industry, Trade and Investment of Zanzibar, Tanzania. Welcome, madam. And of course, our own Pak uh, Agosan Perkasa Ruslani, the chairman of Kadin Indonesia, the Indonesian Chamber of Commerce and Industry. Its counterpart from um, South Africa, Mr. Mitko Sisi Sulu. I hope I pronounced your name right. He's the president of South African Chamber of Commerce and Industry. Um, next to him is Bapa Elfin Masaya, which is the CEO of our own Palindo II. And lastly, Bapa Muhammad Awaludin, the CEO of Angkasa Pura II. So we are well represented today by uh, both government and businesses. And I think the objective of this session, we hope to have some also ideas and ways moving forward in how to enhance more trade between Indonesia and African nations. If you see um, today, it was estimated by African Development Bank that Africa minimum infrastructure development require about 130 to 170 billion per annum, and half of it is currently unfunded. We also has estimated that infrastructure problem constrain Africa productivity by 40% and reduce the continent GDP by about 2% per annum. Africa Continental Free Trade Area, or we call IFC FTA, is a product of the African Union Economic Cooperation, which attempt to create a continental wide single market in Africa following the concept of EU as a single market. This idea is contemplated in 2012 with projection to include 34 African countries. It is technically the largest FTA after the WTO. It has recently launched the negotiation in July 2015. Following this, the African Union also launched action plan on boosting intra-African trade to double intra-African trade in 2020 at a level that doubled its inter-trade flow in 2012. However, they are also concerned that the FC, FTA will be overlapping to similar trade agreement in Africa sub-regional level such as ECOWAS in West Africa, EAC in East Africa, SADC in South Africa, 
and COMESA involving South and East Africa. Inter-Africa trade is only about 17% of the total African country export, lowered, obviously, compared to EU and ASEAN. African trade is dominated by China, India, EU countries, the US, and UAS. Indonesia is currently ranked the 18th biggest importer of Africa goods, um, value five billion in US dollar in 2018, and 23rd biggest exporter to Africa, value 5.49 billion. So if you look, we look at this, the number is still very, very low compared to what the potential should be. Betul ya Pak Enggar ya? So I think this is why we are all here. We want to see um, Indonesia in the rank of the top exporter also to, um, um, to Africa. And how can we enhance more of this cooperation and trade between Indonesia and African countries. So I would like to start the session um, with you, Pa Engar. Um, maybe just to have an idea. As the Indonesian um, Trade Minister, Pa Engar, what is your view of the growing uncertainties to global trade these days? What is Indonesia's trade policy toward African countries? Thank you, Businta. And to my brothers and sisters who travels more than 13,000 kilometers, welcome to Indonesia, which soon you will be calling as a whole. Uh, answering your question, let me begin by sharing that since the onset of trade tensions between two major economies, which then turned into the so-called trade war, Indonesia has taken the view that trade war is a loss-loss is a loss-loss preposition, and nowadays we are facing also the uncertainty about. Uh, Brexit plus the, I can say, the tension Japan and Korea. We are facing the reality and the protectionism and also with that uncertainty uh, we have to show it to the world that Indonesia and African uh, we can, we can, we can. Tr we, we, we are. We have to try to to make the the uh, possibility to explore the possibility to increase our bilateral uh, trade and investment. I believe that no one will truly benefit in a long run from this unfortunate situation, since it will impact on countries with strong forward linkages with those at war and the domino effects it creates the two other countries will only exacerbate economic challenges of many other countries and as mentioned by Businta the potential of Indonesia, Indonesia and African we are a market of 1.5 billion population, approximately about 20% of the world's population. And we are economists with a total GDP of 3.3 trillion US dollar. Indonesia, Africa, total trade with the world is around one for 1.4 trillion US dollars. So we have to explore the possibility to increase our trade and investment. And as what pa Jokowi already, uh, our president, uh, yesterday in the, his keynote speech, we have the 
uh, Brotherhood Indonesia and Africa since 1955, then I think we can we can we can do more with this. Way. Thank you. So definitely, there's lots of potential, pa, but we are still far from yes. reaching that. Yes. But you've been to many African countries, obviously, pa. Um, how many have you been so far? Uh, South Africa, Nigeria, and then um, Morocco, Tunisia. Wow, many, Rosa many, pa. Yes, quite and, many. And when you, you when you went there, pa, you've seen a lot of interest from yes, the business people yes, as well. Yes. Good. I think that's that's something that we need to follow. And we are going to also to Djibouti. Um, so, Minister, um, Minister Homed, um, I found that. This is really because I did some research on Djibouti, and it's I, I, I call it I love it as the Hong Kong of East Africa. Um, I think it's your strategic location in East Africa really um, is comparable to that. Could you tell us, um, Your Excellency, what's the trade potential in, between Indonesian businesses um, that may have with your country and East? Africa in, in general. Bismillah Rahman Rahim, Alhamdulillah Rabbil Alamin, Salat was Salam, Alhamdulillah, Salah, and Salam. Excellence, Mesdames et Messieurs les Ministres, Excellence, Mesdames et Messieurs les Ambassadeurs, Ambassadrices, Excellence, euh, Honorables euh, invités ou participants. Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh. De prime abord, je voudrais vous, euh, vous remercier, c'est-à-dire je voudrais remercier le pays hôte, oh, à mon nom personnel, au nom de la délégation que je conduis, pour l'accueil, pour l'hospitalité et l'accueil chaléré qui nous ont réservé depuis notre arrivée, c'est-à-dire depuis notre depuis que nous avons mis le pied sur leur euh, belle ville touristique qui est Bali euh, jusqu'à l'heure actuelle. Je tiens également à féliciter le pays hôte pour la qualité de l'organisation de la tenue du forum intitulé euh, « Le dialogue de l'infrastructure entre l'Afrique et l'Indonésie ». Eh bien... Euh, je vais, euh, je, vais, je vais être bref, concis et précis, euh, surtout dans la présentation euh, des opportunités que présente notre pays. Eh bien, Djibouti est un pays côtier de la mer Rouge, situé dans la Corne de l'Afrique, bénéficie d'une position géostratégique privilégiée entre trois continents, l'Afrique, l'Asie et l'Europe. Euh, cette position idéale euh, la place euh, cette position la place idéalement à la deuxième route mondiale maritime c'est à dire que, que presque 70% de, euh, de trafic maritime destiné pour euh, le pays de l'Éthiopie passe par cette voie euh, euh, de part à, à le pays aussi euh, il y a lieu quand même euh, de mettre à l'accent que le pays connaît la stabilité politique et la paix sociale, euh, ce qui constitue un atout non négligeable dans une région mouvementée, qui est la Corne de l'Afrique. Ensuite, euh, je voudrais euh, brièvement vous présenter euh, les opportunités que présente notre pays. C'est-à-dire que depuis bientôt dix ans, de par sa position géostratégique, euh, Djibouti présente des opportunités importantes pour, euh, au niveau co régional, continental et voire même international. C'est-à-dire que Djibouti est l'un des pays de libre-échange qui a récemment ratifié la création de l'accord de libre-échange continental africain. Ces dernières années, euh, la République de Djibouti a basé ses investissements sur le développement des infrastructures de grande ampleur. 
c'est-à-dire opérationnalisation d'un train électrique reliant la République de Djibouti à l'Éthiopie, la construction de cinq ports supplémentaires, dont un, dont un port en eau en profondeur, qui est le seul dans la région, finalisation d'une zone franche de 4800 hectares, qui à terme deviendra la plus grande zone en franche de l'Afrique. Parallèlement, Djibouti ambition de réaliser le développement de son secteur aéroportière actuel avec euh, la construction de deux grands aéroports. Euh, la monnaie de Djibouti aussi, il y a lieu, lieu quand même de mettre l'accent sur la monnaie de Djibouti, est stable, elle est indexée au dollar, donc c'est la parité fixe, avec 13 banques ou je ne sais Parallèlement, là je voudrais, euh, d'ailleurs, la délégation djiboutienne présente à Mali pour discuter avec le ministre. Déjà, nous avons pour signer euh, avec le ministre indonésien euh, du commerce sur euh, l'accord commercial préférentiel. La délégation que je conduis comprend aussi également les directeurs du de, euh, général de l'Office du développement de l'énergie géothermique. Cela montre l'intérêt du gouvernement djiboutien de renforcer son secteur énergétique. C'est-à-dire, hier, les directeurs généraux de l'Office du développement énergétique, euh, de l'énergie géothermique a, pu, a ainsi pu rencontrer euh, le président directeur de Ter Pertamina Geothermal Energy, cela fait suite à la visite du Premier ministre Djiboutien, son Excellence Abdurrahim Kamil Mohamed, à Jakarta en mars 2019. Et sa rencontre avec le vice-président, son Excellence Youssouf Kala. Euh, les principaux points qui ont était discuté lors de la réunion entre les entre Pertamina et l'ODEC et qui devrait se matérialiser par la signature d'un mémorandum d'entente, c'est-à-dire partenariat technique entre ODEC et Pertamina dans le domaine de forage géothermique. Après assistance technique des cadres de l'ODEC assistance technique de maintenance foreuse, formation de cadre de l'ODEC. Notons que la partie djiboutienne a envoyé son draft pour les MOU et que ce dernier a un cours de soumission aux procédures internes indonésiennes. Par ailleurs, Djibouti souhaite devenir un hub de télécommunications avec le passage de sept câbles sous-marins qui aujourd'hui permettent d'alimenter plusieurs pays dans la région, dont l'Éthiopie, la Somalie et le Kenya. Djibouti est prête à partager les savoir-faire indonésiens pendant ces deux jours. Des informations en matière de développement touristique et initiées en partenariat pour une coopération en matière de développement touristique, étant donné que que nous sommes aujourd'hui dans une ville touristique. Enfin, nous demandons au gouvernement et au peuple indonésien de venir s'installer à Djibouti en vue d'investir dans leur second pays qui est Djibouti. Je vous remercie de votre attention. Que le bon Dieu nous aide dans la réalisation de nos objectifs et atteindre nos objectifs d'un commun accord. Merci. Thank you, Minister. I'm glad you've been very, very active these past two days. Uh, it seems like many agenda on the table um, and many opportunities for more cooperation um, uh, with companies in Indonesia. I would uh, raise the similar question um, to also you, um, Your Excellency uh, Salung Ali. 
Minister of Trade and Investment from um, Zanzibar, Tanzania. Uh, what are really uh, the key trade potentials between us, uh, Indonesia, and your country? Thank you very much, <coughs> Madam. First of all, I would like to express my profound gratitude for the hospitality and uh, the invitation to be part of the panelist today. Uh, I am from Tanzania, and uh, Tanzania belongs to the East African group. And the East African region is one of the fastest growing region in Africa. And Tanzania is leading in the uh, GDP growth. This year we have registered 7.4 in both uh, Zanzibar government and also the other part of Tanzania, which is Tanzania mainland. Tanzania, if you take uh, as a whole, we are strategically located because we are in the sea, but we are connecting both uh, southern part of Africa, eastern part of Africa, central part of Africa. When I talk about central, I'm talking about the eastern part of Congo, the southern part of, Tan of uh, Africa, including Zambia, up to South Africa, including Maputo, Mo Mozambique, and other neighboring countries. So Tanzania is, is a regional hub when you talk about uh, uh, transportation of cargo from other part of the world to this part of the world. At the same time, Tanzania, we have abundant natural resources, from the metallic resources to huge potential in the agricultural sector. Historically, Tanzania and uh, Indonesia, we do have a very long historical relationship. And also for, for Zanzibar aspect, we have been trading with, with uh, Indonesia for a long time. I can give example of the famous clove uh, products here. The clove, which is grown in Zanzibar, it came from Indonesia, came to Zanzibar, and came back to Indonesia. At the same time, we have other business we used to do together with uh, Indonesia, like uh, importing uh, food, uh, food products like rice and other things. Now, when I talk about Tanzania, that we have a uh, huge potential because you could look at different sectors you like, you find there is a potential for cooperation and there's potential for trading. Tanzania, our population right now is almost above 55 million people. But we are a member of a uh, significant community. We are a member of the Southern African Development Cooperation Community. In totality, these two groups, we already have 350 million people. That means it's a huge market. At the same time, we have, we've already signed uh, CFTA, and also that's another op opportunity for Indonesia to do business with, through Tanzania to access other markets. We're talking about market access here. So when you talk about market access, it means if, if we do business between Tanzania, Zanzibar, and Indonesia, there is a huge opportunity for Indonesia to be able to increase their trade um, potential. I have statistics here. Although Indonesia is doing quite well with other countries in Africa, but Tanzania is exporting to Indonesia uh, items like coffee, tea, most of them are pro uh, agricultural products, spices to the tune of $198.61 million. This was 2017. But we are importing from Indonesia 133.54. That means there is a huge potential of exchange between our two countries. But I also like to look into the mineral sector. Tanzania is leading. It has all the important minerals you can find in Tanzania. From gold, we have huge res reserve of gold. We have huge reserve of uh, iron ore in the southern part of Tanzania. Untapped, we are looking for for opportunity to not only to be able to to invest but also to produce uh, equipment and material that we can be able to sell not only to indonesia but other countries in the world but also we have large coastline large coastline means we can have a, a very uh, good opportunity to invest and to look into uh, marine or blue economy 
to be able to export. And I know in Asia, the uh, marine products have uh, in huge demand. This is a potential for Indonesian company to invest in our part. But lastly, let me talk about the tourism sector. Tanzania, we said, Tanzania is the land of Kilimanjaro, the highest mountain in Africa, then the land of uh, Serengeti, the largest and the very exciting uh, national park for animals, for, for safaris, at the same time, the beautiful island of Zanzibar. Zanzibar is where I came from. We have huge potential for investors. We have had an opportunity to, to talk to Indonesian government to see how, how we can work together, how we can have trade in that sector and the services area. And uh, for instance, like uh, Umra Plus, we can bring in uh, Indonesian um, uh, pilgrimage to visit Zan Tanzania and Zanzibar. That could also bring a trading opportunity between our two countries. And at the same time, we have recently, today, yesterday, we have signed an uh, MOU between uh, Indonesian company and Zanzibar company to produce essential oils because Zanzibar is a hub of uh, essential oils and aromas. And, and this is another opportunity because across African countries, it's only Zanzibar where we, have, we observe a huge potential to be able to, devo to, to develop aromas, essences, and, uh, and uh, as other part of uh, category of uh, essential oils for cosmetics, for perfumery, for other things. So in, in a nutshell, we have a potential, inner potential. But I believe Tanzania and Zanzibar could be the spring block for Indonesia to be able to access Af uh, trading and to increase trading between Indonesia and uh, Af uh, East Africa and the southern part of Africa and also the eastern part of uh, central part of Africa through Congo and other countries in the nearby Burundi and Rwanda. So this is the potential I'm seeing and I believe if we work together, there are some challenges I, th I think. When we, if we face those challenges and we find a solution to those challenges, I'm sure we, there is a lot of possibility and a lot of uh, uh, opportunity for Indonesia to increase the trade. We have the start, the start to discuss issues on uh, uh, bilateral issues like trying to see what uh, uh, terms we are going to have between Tanzania and Indonesia in terms of providing preferential treatment, but uh, we are still discussing on those issues. Thank you very much. Thank you, Minister. And I'm actually one of proof of your tour a beautiful tourism because I brought two years ago, I brought 25 of my family members for safari in Tanzania, Serengeti. And it's during migration time, really, really great. Now, we've heard from the um, government side, you know, all the potential unimaginable. Um, obviously, now business have to do the work. I mean, all the potential are there means nothing if we're not going to follow it through. So I'm going to start with Pak Gosan. Obviously, now you've seen, you know, we've been talking about all the potential with African countries. But, and we, you also have seen that many of our businesses have gone um, to Africa and start trading with some of um, the businesses there. Um, you know, the past two days, we have a special desk, uh, Kadin has um, uh, um, in the exhibition hall, we have um, a special desk there, and it's been like ongoing people, you know, um, business people um, um, come in, and even, even not just the pre-arranged meeting, but people just stop by and want to, to, to talk more and to look at what, how, how we, we, can, um, we can match and we can bring more Indonesian and African businesses uh, together. So, what's your take, um, uh, Pak Gosan? What are really the challenges? Why are we not reaching our potential? Please. Well, uh, thank you very much. First of all, to excellencies, uh, ministers, ambassador, and also uh, speaker, business dele delegation from uh, African countries. Well, we, we hear that a lot of uh, potential actually that can develop among uh, Indonesia and uh, African countries. Uh, the interest is I, think I can say it's humongous because uh, I, for the past two days, I, I met with a lot of different parties, with our colleague from the chambers of commerce, from the uh, ministers and uh, businesses from African and 
they would they would like to know how not only to invest in Indonesia or to to do trade in with Indonesia, uh, but what is the 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 to expand and also to untap the potential that we think we can we can do together. Well, some of the challenges actually, uh, if I discuss it with uh, our counterpart, uh, one of the challenges is the, uh, the the financing scheme, because uh, we know some of the African countries is still impose on the currency control. Even though now we find the solution already, uh, we work with the Exim Bank of Indonesia and the Exim Bank of Indonesia work with the African Bank. Uh, to, to solve this financing scheme. But uh, we in the Chambers of Commerce Industry in Indonesia, we strongly believe that if, you know, because we work also very closely with our government, uh, if we met regularly, uh, we always can find a solution. Uh, that's why this event, Indonesia African event summit is, is, is uh, a very good uh, platform for, for all of us to meet to know and then to see the, the potential. How, because uh, my, uh, because sometimes we cannot just do uh, trade or, or even investment without knowing uh, the people there, you know, the culture, the policy, uh, the permits that uh, we need to have uh, in order to enhance our uh, trade investment and also in education because now, uh, for example, with some of African country, I know we have some uh, working relationship how to improve not only trade, but also investment and education. Uh, and the other thing is uh, to, uh, we always advise to work with, with uh, local partners also, because that also uh, helping. Uh, and the third thing is the tariff. Uh, so what our Ministry of Trade doing right now, uh, you know, uh, having uh, PTA just completed with Mozambique, and we are uh, discussing the potential PTA and and enhancing the FTA, because uh, for our export, uh, for example, like the palm oil, we still get, if I'm not mistaken, like 26% of tariff. Our clothing uh, apparel still get like 35%. Uh, uh, tariff so uh, and for cotton for example I think we can take a lot of cotton from African countries because we cannot produce cotton so uh, and then uh, cashew nuts so actually there's a lot of things that we can we can export together because in Indonesia we cannot produce cotton right so we always most of the time buying cotton from from the US why not we, we, we are uh, enhancing our uh, cotton uh, buyer from African countries. So I think that kind of potential we, uh, we can uh, export together uh, in order for us to, to increase our, our trade. Uh, and also uh, since President Jokowi uh, become the president, the priority is to open up with the other countries like African countries, Middle East countries, uh, to improve trade. So, and we are doing this together with Minister of Trade. How we can facilitate uh, in order to to the in order to turn the potential into the implementation? Yes, you know the the potential is huge, but if you don't if we don't meet if uh, rest, uh, regularly, I, I don't think we can we can maximize the, the potential that can be done uh, among uh, Indonesia and African countries. Thank you. Yes, um, thank you, Parasan. Definitely, uh, we need more of this PTA for um, um, tariff. I think that's a lot of uh, is issues that has been faced by our businesses that um, we can't be competing if the tariff is too high. So I think that's the job of the government, Yapa Engar, how to get more PTA going with uh, more countries in Africa. Now, I want to go um, to um, um, our fellow um, uh, Ms. Mr. Sulu um, from the um, South African Chamber of Commerce. Um, you know, I, I think it's only fair for me to ask you the same question because obviously 
I'm sure you have also similar issues from the Indone from African businesses for the, to the Indonesia when they want to export to Indonesia. You know, um, are there any challenges um, that you, you are aware of that um, also are faced by African businesses? What are some perhaps more practical um, um, experiences that can also help us in, in uh, developing uh, more uh, in trading together with, with your, your um, site? Please. Okay. Thank you, thank you, Cynthia, and thank you uh, for having me. Uh, greetings to all the uh, delegates and participants. From the South African point of view, I mean, um, we see this relationship more on, in a positive light uh, based on the opportunities that we believe uh, it presents for the private sector in South Africa and actually generally throughout the continent. Uh, the, where we find ourselves now is that we, we get a sense that we are more relatable to each other on a political level and not so much strengthened at economic and at trade level. So, for instance, uh, and a forum like this, uh, you know, has demonstrated how close we are as the two regions. But what I think we would like to see more uh, as the private sector in South Africa, and I speak of maybe also on the continent, is that more uh, direct collaboration between uh, our various uh, private sector through our various uh, organized business formations. The opportunities that we see is the fact that we are also a growing uh, region. I mean, all the numbers are out there for everybody to know, you know our population, uh, the age of our population, and all the opportunities that that presents. But we also see greater opportunity for African com uh, companies to trade with Indonesia because the domestic market of uh, over 200 million people is also a sufficient number to start with. But because of the central role that you play in, these, in the ASEAN nations, we also see it as a great opportunity for us to trade with the region. So ultimately, between the two economic blocks, I think we can help each other uh, growing these economies and positioning ourselves as the two largest economic regions. Uh, but what we will also need to do is that we will also have to look into investments to unlock uh, the productive capacity of Africa. Because it's one thing to say uh, we want to trade with each other, but how sophisticated uh, and of what quality products are we producing in Africa? for us to be able to unlock the productive capacity of Africa and to be able to meet the standards that uh, the Indonesia consumers will place on goods that come from uh, Africa as well as into Southeast Asia. We know that uh, obviously the standards of consumption and the standards of consumers in this region is fairly high. So uh, we look at trade but we also look at the opportunities that uh, you have as Indonesia to invest in the productive capacity of Africa. And that productive capacity of Africa does not actually just have to be goods being traded back into Asia, it's also goods being traded within uh, the continent. Uh, the Continental Free Trade Agreement is a great, uh, p uh, great instrument for trade but it's also an opportunity for Indonesian companies that want to trade with African countries to set up shop in Africa and be able to be closer to the market. You don't necessarily have to bring the goods directly out of Asia into Africa. We can partner with locally based companies and produce goods in Africa for the African market and also find opportunities to do the same in investing in Southeast Asia to produce goods and be closer to the markets in this region. Eventually, uh, we'll then be able to be a partnership of equals, economically speaking. And in that way, I think it will also allow us to easily breach the gaps that are usually found with uh, you know, inconsistent tariff regimes, inconsistent finance regimes. Because once we are in a common uh, uh, investment pool, we are also then able to break down these this barriers and be able to lobby our governments more effectively because we, we own the productive capacity and the goods um, f from, f from both uh, backgrounds. So I think the what we find as a private sector is that we need to produce goods together for our respective markets. And that means 
learning from each of our counterparts in the private sectors, but also uh, collaborating in areas where we have a common interest. Thank you. Well, I'm going to go deeper to that question later on the second round, but I want to give the opportunity to all the speakers first to speak. Um, uh, pa, pa, uh, Evelyn, um, you're heading now Palindo Dua, and um, we talk about um, trading uh, maritime trade infrastructure is an enabler. Um, can you give us an overview on how you think Palindo Dua can facilitate the trade that we can contemplate with uh, African countries. How efficient can Indonesia, Africa bilateral trade logistic be? Please. Thank you very much for the question. I think before I answer the question, allow me to introduce with what is yes. Palindo 2. Palindo 2 actually is uh, the largest port operator in Indonesia, the largest seaport operator in Indonesia. Palindo 2 also have a well-known name in international, people say Pelindo 2 is uh, Indonesia Port Corporation. So Indonesia Port Corporation or IPC is the largest port in Indonesia and we manage 12 big port from the west side, the west, the west part of Indonesia till east part of Indonesia. We already have experience more than 50 years as a port operator. And now I want to share to you what we, we have done and what we can do together with the uh, uh, African countries. One of the interesting things that I want to tell you, IPC or Indonesia Port Corporation has a tagline. The tagline say, Lindo 2 or IPC, energizing trade, energizing Indonesia. And I think today, if you give us opportunity, I also can say to you, energizing Africa. So energizing trade, energizing Indonesia, and energizing Africa. How do we do it? Actually, since uh, a few years ago, we tried to modernize our port. Why is that? Because port is the main strategic support for the trade. Main strategic support to enhance, to develop our trade, including Indonesia and Africa. The way we manage our port, we digit digitalize all the activity from the marine side, terminal side, logistic, warehousing, and so on. So now we start not just only as the port operator, but we also want to be trade facilitator. And what is the meaning of trade facilitator? We will boost the trade activity from reduced logistic costs, provide the modern infrastructure, we provide the modern equipment, and also have direct relationship between Indonesia and other country, and also African country. And actually, we already try to discuss with many countries from Africa. Let's say Port of Djibouti, for instance, uh, Port of uh, Janjibar in Tanzania, how we can collaborate with them, how we can grow together, and how we can get the mutual benefit if we do port activity together. But the point is, uh, we must have a concrete demand from African countries in which part that we can enter African countries and in which part they expect that we can do it together. So uh, in this important forum today, actually uh, we can propose to you, a uh, friend from African country, that we already experienced on port activities since 50 years ago. Uh, and it also so that we fulfill the biggest criteria to be partner. What is the biggest criteria to be partner? The first one, uh, the partner have to have uh, experience. Plendo 2 or IPC have experience more than 15 years. The second thing is uh, expertise. We have expertise in port activity, marine activity, and also uh, warehousing or logistic activity. And the third one, capital. We have to say that if you give us opportunity to working together, we also can provide capital to do port activity in African countries. And the last one, the most important thing is uh, what we call business. Indonesia is one of the biggest exporters to the African country. So if we can working together, the port not only in Indonesia but also in African country, our trade of course will be increased our economic value will be increased, and it will show that African countries, Indonesia countries, actually is 
to both country that can grow together, can have a collaboration, can reach mutual benefit in the future through the port business. And how do we do it? I want to propose one new concept, how to make port activity as a main strategic support for the trade activity. Since a few years ago, we implement the new concept that we call Trilogy Maritime. Trilogy Maritime consists of industrial area to support the trade, the production, the port itself, and shipping line. So the three components, industrial area, port, and shipping line, could be linked. And if we can deploy the three big items in the port industrial, the trade will be boost, the trade will be increased, and the economic value will be increased. So uh, in this forum, I want to introduce Trilogy Maritime as the concept, modernize the port, digitalize the port, and how we can working together, collaborate, get the mutual benefit, grow together by doing port activity in Africa country. Thank you. Thank you, Pat. So I think this trilogy, trilogy maritime concept, very interesting. Have you started, Pat, discussion with any businesses now um, from the Afri any of the African countries to yes. talk about this? Yes, actually we start to discuss with friends from Zanzibar, Tanzania, to the port in Zanzibar together. And we also already discussed with uh, friends from uh, Djibouti. And actually there are more than that two countries have a chance working together with us how to boost our trade between Indonesia and African country through our port to distribute uh, the cargo, to distribute, to distribute the uh, all, all things. And I think we can discuss with uh, friends from Kenya, Nigeria, and also other countries. We are very open for that. Great, but great news. Um, sorry, maybe I can ask the organizer. I think there's some technical problem with the... Okay. Um, Ah, wow. Yeah, um, I think uh, similar, you are also an enabler, but, or our, our, our cargo as is also a key trade infrastructure enabler. Um, uh, particularly for the long distance and obviously um, immediate trading. However, um, as air transport is usually cost higher to business than other modes of trust, uh, trade logistics, can you tell us what, what is, how about your potential? You know, how would you like to see your role um, as um, Angkasapura doing business in the African countries, please, to obviously support trade? So thank you so much. Uh, good afternoon, uh, Excellency Minister, Excellency Ambassador, uh, distinguished guests. Uh, I would like to convey briefly about the Angkasapura 2. Angkasapura 2 is a state-owned enterprise like uh, Pelindo 2, but we are engaging in airport operators in Indonesia, especially in western part of Indonesia. Uh, currently, we are managing 16 portfolio of the airport uh, around the countries. And today, we just preparing also and building the capacity uh, to manage until the 20 of airports in the area of the Indonesia, in the Western power Indonesia. So uh, it's like a state-owned enterprise. Uh, the government giving is quite much uh, the opportunity to opening the uh, new area for the air transport in Indonesia. And then uh, until now, I think we already uh, 35 years in uh, airport operator business and also the air uh, transport industry in Indonesia. So uh, we believe that uh, the possibility to join between Indonesia and Africa in terms of the airport operator, I think, is uh, quite much open. Uh, according to the data that uh, I see the last two years between Indonesia and Africa, the prospect and the opportunity for the uh, goods for the air transport, I see the data, some data is like a general cargo, and then uh, textile also, uh, dangerous goods, perishable goods. Uh, we believe that uh, that is, uh, is quite much opportunity to uh, using the air transport and supporting FTA and PTA 
uh, according to the joint committee between Indonesia and Africa. The second thing I think in the world is the opportunity for the incredible growing of the e-commerce business. So uh, Indonesia and Africa, uh, I believe that we have to become a strong partnership in trade by the air transport and then uh, since also in Africa also the growing of the fastest internet is also high and e-commerce will be the potential uh, business to increase today and uh, the facility for the uh, air transport between Indonesia and Africa so I think it is giving the opportunity for two countries but uh, it is very clear also that uh, Sinta uh, mentioned before that the to make uh, the air transport uh, as a competitive logistic option I think it is believe that uh, Indonesia and Africa need to set up the new routes and also destination from Indonesia to Africa uh, and also from Africa to Indonesia. Today we have only one route and one destination from Addis Ababa, from Ethiopia to Jakarta. So I think it is very important uh, making a new direct connection uh, from Indonesia and Africa. That's why it is very important uh, to push the air transport cost or the, or the uh, air transport price uh, become more uh, cheaper. So I thank you. Thank you, Pak Awal, and I think that's still the very big issue for us. I remember last year I was sitting here and we, that, that time we were only exploring, it was not launched yet, the Ethiopian Airlines um, uh, route, um, Jakarta to Addis Ababa, and I'm glad now it's there, but obviously it's not sufficient. We need to do more of that. Um, I want to now, you know, we have wrapped up the first round. Um, I want to go to the next one. Uh, I saw my slide, oh, there's no questions yet from the audience. So if you have any questions, um, please uh, go to your, um, to the, to the system. But I want to go back now to Pa Engag. Um, obviously, um, Pa Engag, you've mentioned all the potential, very encouraging. Um, but what, what can you tell, you know, you, you, you talk um, Africa, you know, we, we have history, brotherhood. What, is, um, what can you say um, to our guests from the, this African continent that they should look at in considering Indonesia as a true partner for the future, in your own words? Well, uh, I'm going to start that we have, a, we have very long relations with the African continent. It can be dated back to the year 1652, when a group of people from Java landed on Cape of Good Hope Beach. They became known as Cape Malayans and they have spread to other parts of Africa since then. And we also have a long history of political support in our struggle for independence. This was cemented by the Asian African Conference in 1955. Our first president, Sukarno, visited some of your countries, made friends with emerging African leaders of that era, and showed strong political support for African countries to be on their own foot. Now that the world has evolved over time, I see there is no reason not to re-engage with Africa in a truly meaningful way. We share a common pursuit of providing a better livelihood to our people. And this cannot be achieved in a vacuum. We need friends to collaborate to achieve such an objective. Let me talk a little bit about Indonesia to give you a glance of what Indonesia is for now and in the future. Through a long process of continuous political, economic, and social adjustment, this archipelagic nation now stands as the 16th largest economy in the world with stable democracy. Indonesia is surely cementing a reputation as a standout in the global economy, recording an average growth of 5.2% for the last three decades. 
supported by stable macroeconomy and guided by pro-market governments. By 2030, Indonesia will become the seventh largest economy in the world, with 135 million medium-class consumers. And by 2050, Indonesia will be the fourth largest economy in the world. Indonesia also has been quite active in pursuing trade agreements with potential partners. As the critical mass of ASEAN, Indonesia took part in all ASEAN negotiations with six ASEAN partners. They are Australia, New Zealand, China, India, Japan, and South Korea. We also have bilateral agreements with Japan, Pakistan, and Chile while pursuing negotiations with 14 other countries. One of these negotiations is toward a Regional Comprehensive Economic Partnership, or RCEP, initiated by Indonesia in 2011. Once concluded, hopefully this year, the RCEP will become the largest regional trade agreement on Earth, representing a market of nearly half of the world's population. 30% of global GDP, 27% of world's foreign direct investment, and 28% of world exports. What I'm trying to get across is that Indonesia could become your perfect partner of development. We would catapult our economy into a brighter future, and we wish to do it together with our longtime partner, Africa. That is the spirit that we inherit from President Sukarno, Indonesia's founding father, the first president. Thank you. Um, <laughs> um, um, Pak Enggak, I think definitely history has, has told that um, we, we do have a lot of, um, you know, um, we have started with a, a very, very strong um, foundation and to move forward. But at the end of the day, we always, the question is always, I think histor history is important, but what's next? I mean, what really can we do to really our, increase our, our trade with African countries, as you said? So, can you um, perhaps share with us more um, concretely what, what in, you, in your view, what, what are really the steps that we need to do in terms of reaching to that, um, you, know, um, the, you know, the current status, you know, you've seen this, you know, how can we really bring these two sides closer in terms of the economic relation and what is really your, your next plan? Uh, we facilitate, basically we started with facilitate uh, as a government B2B and we push and we ask the uh, uh, business people and Indonesian Chamber of Commerce to go together with us to, to Africa. And the most important thing, we are trying to, to make the uh, agreement, either SEPA Comprehensive Economic Partnership Agreement, FTA or PTA. Technically, we already, it's already concluded and just only signed Indonesia and Mozambique. And then followed by with Tunisia and hopefully with Africa starting in, uh, around uh, November. And we just launched the uh, starting to the uh, joint feasibility study with Djibouti, and then we also starting to study with Zanzibar and also with Uganda, and next with other uh, Mauritius and other countries. We also uh, push ECOWAS and SACU. We still waiting the response from SACO and ECOWAS. This a very potential and we are open with the uh, African. Uh, 
Um, thank you, Pak. And I think that really will help um, businesses as well. Um, Pak Rosan can share, you know, how much this is important for us as well. Yeah, right, Pak Rosan? Um, uh, uh, ministers, uh, perhaps both of you coming, um, Minister of Trade, Djibouti, and also um, from Tanzania. Do you agree with our minister? Is this an important part to, um, to start with in terms of um, bringing our um, uh, trading to uh, the next level? Uh, first, perhaps, uh, Your Excellency, from uh, Minister Djibouti. Bismillah ar-Rahman ar-Rahim, alhamdulillah, rabbil alameen, as-salatu wa-salam, ala rasulullah, sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. C'est très important de nuer quand même... Attends. On attend bien du coup. Oui, merci madame de m'avoir posé la question sur... Euh, de m'avoir posé cette question. Donc, euh, qu'est-ce que j'avais dit là J'ai perdu l'enchaînement d'idées. Euh, qu'est-ce qu'on avait dit Sorry. Ok. Yes, please. Please. C'est-à-dire de c'est très important pour nous pour nous c'est-à-dire Djibouti euh, dénouer un partenariat commercial c'est-à-dire avec l'Indonésie qui a toujours été euh, comment dirais-je un partenaire euh, privilégié de longue date c'est-à-dire avec Djibouti on avait euh, beaucoup de partage c'est-à-dire on avait euh, un commun accord, la, la religion, beaucoup de points communs. Donc euh, pour nous, c'est très important aussi euh, de venir avec votre savoir-faire et de venir euh, euh, et surtout investir euh, dans notre pays. C'est très important pour Djibouti. Donc je, je, c'est intéressant de, à ce que... Djibouti a conclu un accord commercial préférentiel avec l'Indonésie. Um, okay, thank you. So, sorry, translation is a little bit late. Um, we have also a question from the audience um, in terms of how Indonesia should approach Africa now that the majority of countries have joined the ACS FTA. Should Indonesia negotiate with the ACS FTA or with individual groupings? Perhaps uh, you would like to add, um, or uh, Minister, um, uh, would you like to as also answer this question? Thank you very much. Yes, I would like to answer this question, but before answering this question, I would like to add from Minister from Indonesia spoke about the steps. I believe the steps that he mentioned is right steps, but I think we should also go beyond those steps. Why? Because we need to produce our products to be competitive. Because not only we don't focus for Indonesian market alone, but even Indonesia can access other markets through our countries, through Tanzania because we have other, like AGOA, we have EU and other trade arrangement, and we have preferential treatment, some of these uh, uh, blocks. But at the same time, we also need to see that uh, we intend to trade uh, a program so that we use technology, especially in terms of research and development, and also encouraging innovation. This is what is lacking in many countries in Africa, especially even in Tanzania. We do similar products, we also we export raw, mater raw material, but we want to develop into an alternative type of uh, products. For instance, I'm producing clothes that I'm selling clothes as it is. What are the new uh, use of items like clothes or other, other, other products? So innovation and uh, research and development, this is the thing that we think, I think, Indonesia should also take another step to help the country like Tanzania because we, we, through exchange of uh, our research, our scientists, 
and also bring in scientists or open up some of the research institutions in Tanzania to be able, in Zanzibar, Tanzania to be able to move and to bring those products into that standard. Question of uh, quality and assurances and certification also is a big problem in many countries, not only for Indonesian market, but also for other markets. So we have to go, that could be the first step, but we should go extra mileage to be able to, to really have a very good product that can really compete in, in, I mean, otherwise, if you want market access, you have to have a product that can compete and can be acceptable to the consumer. Now, with respect to uh, trade arrangement like CFTA, and of course, we have the civil community, we have others. I think with CFTA, it opened up a, a huge opportunity for Indonesia. Why? Because when you invest in one of, let's say, we do trading in one of the countries in Africa, for instance, if in Tanzania we are with, we ratify that protocol, that means we have access to all those 54 countries. But once we have a company investing in Tanzania, that is satisfying the demand for like a country called a country of origin, other things, that opens up the market for the products, the company from Indonesia. But at the same time, because I've seen with the USA and uh, European Union, they also have bilateral trade agreement with yes. other countries. Yes. That will not stop Indonesia also to negotiate and to continue with other bilateral arrangement with other countries. Because I don't think it is like, like Mozambique and other countries have already signed. That means it's not, it, up to now it has not been forbidden. But in the future, maybe they may look into other arrangements. But I think CFTA is, does open a huge opportunity for Indonesian company to invest because then you enter a huge market that would enable other, their products to access any market in Africa with the concessional terms as long as they have, they meet that sort of criteria, the criteria of country for and other country criteria that normally allowed within this sort of arrangement. Thank you. So um, the question, I, I'm going to um, uh, go a little bit deeper. So um, I think the question is saying, is, does Indonesia, should Indonesia also negotiate on the CFT, FTA? No, no, no. When, when, when you, you, like, I'll give you an example, because now CFTA we have not ratified, Tanzania have not ratified. But for instance, you want to, to enter a uh, African market, right? And you want to, they say, to, to be able to bring in your products there. The best way is to, in, to have a, a company in that area, in Tanzania. Mm -hmm. That means also if you have a company, there are some rules of origin and other things that will enable you now to be able to export it to all those countries within, within that trade arrangement. Okay. Okay. For instance, right now, we have a, our companies going to invest in Tanzania, yes. Tanzania, Zanzibar, the essential oil and essence. Once they have their company there, we are working together, joint venture or a private company, then they can access, they have the category, they can access all the market with the preferential uh, tariff and preferential tax arrangement. I see. So any countries in Africa then will have similar treatment as well. Through CFTA. Once, once they have signed off on the... Through CFTA. So CFTA. Even with the subregional group like ECF community, like Comesa, we are again yes. are going to have the tripartite. Yes. So, so basically any, whether that's bilateral or in, in the sub-sub-African, um, like the, with East Africa, or the, those are not overlapping. So basically we should still continue negotiating with, with any of those. Right? Right now, you can, if we, for instance, if you invest in East Africa, you have a company in East Africa that is producing products within the category, then you don't need to negotiate with the African. You, you really already... But that if you invest, how about um, we're just trading? Now, even if, if in terms of trading, then you have to sit, you have to meet certain criteria of country of origin. Rules of origin, that's a criteria. Okay. But again, if you have bilateral relations between let's say Tanzania and Indonesia, you can have a specific terms to be able to give a most favored treatment to these two countries. That's another arrangement. Okay, thank you. Um, we move to, uh, bis back to business. Um, but Gosan, I think um, you've heard now um, some of the, you know, w w you know, from the government side, and you also have shared with us some of the challenges. But, now we need the real action, right? We need the real action happening. So what is really, what should we do now? I mean, you've heard, uh, of course, during these two days, businesses has come 
um, you know, together, many, many interests has been there. But what, is, what should we do? What is the next step for us? Well, uh, definitely uh, the private sector and also the, uh, the, uh, the state-owned companies need to meet with the, 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 the counterpart, right? Uh, because the challenges uh, with different regions sometimes is also is uh, uh, dif different uh, obstacles. Uh, we need to also more focus on uh, a certain uh, trade or investment. Uh, for example, if we are talking about uh, investment, uh, some of Indonesian companies already uh, invest in African countries like Indofood, they invest in uh, Ethiopia, in, in, in Nigeria, and in also a couple of uh, African countries. Uh, that will also uh, a good uh, cooperation because it also create uh, a lot of employment on their uh, designated countries. But in the same time, the goods become more competitive because there's no more uh, logistic cost, uh, which is quite uh, you know, quite uh, uh, high at the time. So uh, not not only we, we we are looking about how to improve the trade, but the investment between two, you know, between two continents is also very important. Uh, I know actually from African countries, from South Africa, actually the, the biggest investment has come from South Africa in terms of the African countries. Uh, and, say, and also from uh, Namibia and from Mali. So uh, that kind of things uh, can, can, can happen if uh, we sit down and have a, a discussion with uh, some groups and to see what is, you know, what is the obstacles that we can ex uh, ex uh, find the solution. Uh, and having a regular meeting, I think it also create, create the, the opportunity. Mentioned it earlier by uh, Palindo uh, too, you know, they are, you know, because of this event, they are now start working with the port operator from Djibouti from Tanzania, I think it will create a lot of uh, interest. Uh, and of course, we need to do some assessment, some uh, joint studies. But uh, as long as we already targeted and knowing what is the potential, what is the, the opportunities, then we can sit down and uh, look on the details, what the step need to be taken in order the, the implementation uh, to be uh, achieved in the, in the due time. Thank you. So, and you can obviously look next to you is your counterpart from South Africa, the President of the Chamber, Mr. Sulu. Um, so, I think we really now need to take action and do business. Yes. You were mentioned about even bringing uh, more businesses to, um, coming here or uh, we bring businesses um, to your country. Um, but uh, obviously, uh, delegation is one thing. Uh, the most important is um, for us to really identify uh, what sectors, what, you know, pr um, what products can we really enhance for cooperation? And do you, um, in your, is there any specific ideas that you can come up with? I mean, I, obviously I mentioned about, for example, we will have a Big Trade Expo in October. Please bring your delegation here. But what can we do in preparation for all this? How can we encourage more of this uh, B2B cooperation? Please. Yes, thank you very much. Um, I think our next practical step as the Chamber of Commerce of South Africa uh, will be that we need to explore strengthening, setting up and strengthening a joint business council so that our private sectors are able to meet directly and beyond that, those joint business councils and obviously will be broken down into working groups focusing on specific um, uh, sectors uh, that uh, we, we will find commonality on. And this uh, business council, we can decide whether we want to set it up as a, con uh, as a consequence of this event at a continental level where we can uh, obviously find representation that is spread throughout the continent or we can set it up at a state level where uh, Indonesia Chamber of Commerce and South African Chamber of Commerce will set up a joint business council Beyond that, uh, we will obviously from South Africa be coming in obviously primarily looking at uh, continuous cooperation in the mining space 
because we still have a, a healthy industry in the mining space, which we also share with, um, uh, with Indonesia, which uh, uh, leads to energy. We also have a, 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 a huge uh, economy in the space of um, infrastructure development, uh, because of most of this uh, economic value is going to be unlocked with uh, the development of modern uh, infrastructure. We will put, bring to the table uh, huge opportunities uh, in the tourism space, obviously looking at how we can take similar products that have uh, been a success in Bali and, and, and into other African countries. We will not uh, uh, forget uh, cooperation in the space of technology. Uh, technology, uh, as we all know, is going to be a huge driver of how we produce uh, goods and services moving forward. So those are just some of the sectors that we are looking at. Obviously, the ocean's economy is something that we are looking at um, very, very uh, um, fondly. These are just some of the sectors that uh, we will put together. But how we make them practical is that you have a joint business council that can meet at least twice a year. And from that, you will start seeing traction in projects, in tractions in enhanced trade, and traction in actual economic cooperation in the true sense of the word. Thank you, Mr. Lee. I was warned that time is up, but I want to give opportunity for Evelyn uh, Pawel to give a close 16, maybe one minute each, if you don't mind, very quickly. Yeah, thank you. I think the best way to have a next step of this dialogue is engagement B2B between the player in Africa and Indonesia. Then afterwards, uh, our investor can go to Africa. The investor from Africa also can go to Indonesia. So it it will call mutual benefit, collaboration, and grow together. I think that's the conclusion of this dialogue. Thank you. Thank you, Paul. Please. Uh, I think uh, as we, the airport operator in Indonesia, we are the biggest airport operator in Indonesia. We are offering also the joint partnership, creating the mutual benefit between Indonesia and Africa. I think we believe that uh, since the air transport infrastructure in Africa still need uh, many to improve, we are offering some kinds of the uh, opportunity uh, come into the joint strategic partnership between Indonesia and Africa. And we believe that uh, uh, through the joint partnership between airport operator in Indonesia and then uh, African countries, I think we can improve the service level together. Uh, we can believe, we, 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 we also believe that using the digital technology is very important since uh, the uh, airport infrastructure today is very uh, closely with the using of the digital infrastructure. Okay. And uh, finally, I think in Indonesia, Angkasa Pura II is already very massive in developing the airport infrastructure. Uh, we can share our experience and then uh, we can build the strong partnership between Indonesia and Africa in terms of uh, to build and improve the uh, airport and air transport industry between Indonesia and Africa. So I thank you. Thank you very much, Paawa. And um, this is the end of our session. I would just say, I think we have um, in such a limited time with um, seven speakers, we try to manage uh, to have a, quite a fruitful discussion. So I think many potential, as it was mentioned by um, um, our representative of government, uh, our ministers, um, but obviously it's a lot of challenges, um, financing, market access, especially with a high tariff that leads uh, trade agreements to support. Um, I think we need more direct collaboration and also trading with region um, between As ASEAN and Africa. So not just Indonesia and Africa, but also the region ASEAN and, um, and, and Africa. So, and also, I think um, we have to, um, in, you know, I, uh, the word in, uh, needs investment to unlock some of the production, um, to unlock the production capacity in Africa. I think this is very, very important. And some cooperation on uh, product development, technology, innovation, I think this is important also to bring um, more competitive products. So that's... Um,
thank you very much, uh, ladies and gentlemen, and um, I hope you also will gain something back. And um, at the end of the day, the most important is how we can start now really doing the real action. And when next year we meet, we'll have much more um, uh, uh, progress in terms of our cooperation with uh, Indonesia and other um, and all the ASEAN uh, and all the African countries. Thank you very much. Thank you, Ms. Moderator.